welcome to Canopy. We're delighted that you're with us this morning. Yep, welcome back if you were with us last night for our national prayer gathering. We hope that you uh, enjoyed and were encouraged by all that happened. And if you were at the All Age uh, gathering this morning as well, we hope you enjoyed that and thanks for staying around and joining in as well. It was so powerful to see people from across the country joining in prayer together. Ali, why don't we introduce ourselves? Good thinking. Good idea. On you go. <laughs> so, my name is Ailey Horn and I'm from Kirk and Tillich Baptist Church. And I'm Ali Ling and I'm part of Cambus Lang Baptist and I'm also part of the national team of the Baptist Union of Scotland. This is the first of two sessions this morning and we're delighted to be hearing lots of stories from across Scotland. We have Mark Morris from Deniston Baptist Church sharing from the Bible and we will also be hearing from a global perspective from BMS. There's lots going on, so please check out our programme on our website for more information about what's happening, particularly in the seminars that are happening this afternoon. We're going to be your hosts for this morning's session. Now, in case this is all new to you, we just want to take a minute to give you a bit of an explanation about why Canopy is happening and why we're so glad you've chosen to be part of it. If you were at the prayer gathering last night, you'll have heard the, how this idea partly inspired by some words in Isaiah 4, where it says, when God's people assembled his glory, will be a canopy over us. So first and foremost, together, right now, wherever we are under the canopy of God's glory, this is a holy place. The atmosphere is special because we believe the, and sense that God's glory is over us all. But there's another strand to this canopy theme. Back in March, uh, the Council of the Baptist Union met in Perth and for those who don't know that's a bunch of about 45 representatives from Baptist churches from across our network and we try to listen to what God is saying about our mission together and we ask this question what picture helps us understand what the network of churches that we're part of is all about? We came up with a few good ideas but the one that really landed that came to us with a kind of like prophetic edge was the picture of a forest. If you walk into a forest, it looks like there's lots of individual trees growing separately, maybe even competing with each other for sunlight or water. But if you were to go beneath the surface, under the ground, you would find the roots were intertwined and interconnected by a dense web of fungus called mycelium. And through this underground network, the trees don't compete but actually share resources. At root level, water and minerals are passed from one tree to another to support and strengthen each other. So how about this is a picture of Baptist churches? We are like individual trees in a forest. Each church grows with its own unique beauty, but beneath the surface, at root level, we are part of a network that strengthens and resources one another, sharing what we have for the good of all the churches. Our rooting is first and foremost a rooting in Christ, and this is what ultimately joins us together. But through that root structure, we share knowledge and understanding gifts and resources, encouragement and accountability. And we gather together like this, especially aware of the forest of churches around us and the glory of God like the forest canopy over us. Canopy is a time for us all to join together and do we do really value input from each other. So wherever you are right now, please do get in contact and share stories that build faith, words or pictures that you sense might be from God. We are all in this together. You can text us on 07864133557. That sounded a bit like some kind of gift aid thing. It's not. <laughs> and you can see the number there. Send us a message on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. YouTube Live just now is a great message function. Please like and subscribe so we keep updating you with when we're going live across the weekend. So let's join together this morning in worshipping together. Please feel free to sit, stand and sing in your own homes. And let's join together to lift high the name of Jesus as we begin this morning. Let our praise be a welcome. Let our songs be a sign. We are here for you. We are here for you. Let your breath come from heaven, fill our hearts with your life. We are here for you. We are here for you. you 
There was lots of great words. A number of times Isaiah 60 was mentioned, a lot of people had a sense of the Lord saying these words, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Yep, I had um, seen Creef Baptist Church have said, God is amazing, his grace and providence. And they've shared Psalm 62, 8, which says, Trust in him at all times. You people pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. 
uh, we had a lot of words that were just capturing on the theme of unity and togetherness mm -hmm. and how uh, we were not just connected by Wi-Fi but by the spirit and a number of folk had some significant senses of pictures of, of joining together, of, of churches holding hands as a circle around Scotland in unity, looking for God's blessing on the land. Yep, and a lot of people saying that they were just loving, feeling the togetherness and God's unfailing love. So please do keep sharing. We really value them and it helps us build up a picture of what God is saying to us as churches across this land. So please do take some time to think, reflect and share what uh, might be coming on just in the live stream there. That would be brilliant. Definitely. God has been showing us um, things that... Um, to, so God has been showing, showing his things to churches all over Scotland over the past few months. We're delighted to hear from a couple of these churches now. Firstly, we're going to head up to Isle of Baptist to hear what's been happening there. And then we're going to go across to Deniston in Glasgow to hear their story also. Hello, uh, I'm Andrew and this is Emily and I'm the minister at Isla Baptist Church. Uh, we've been here nearly two years now and we love it here. We feel very privileged that God has called us to serve here. Before the lockdown, um, there was a number of things going really well. We had uh, a junior church um, that had been attracting some new families. We had uh, a really thriving youth work and we had just started a toddler group um, that had been going just a few weeks when lockdown came. So it's fair to say lockdown felt like a real blow because so many things were going so well and then obviously a lot of things had to stop but that wasn't necessarily the whole story in that God has shown his power to turn even the most difficult things for good. And we have seen some good things come out of lockdown. Uh, we have a brand new uh, church website, which was designed and created by two people in the church who were on a form of furlough. And that website now has really connected in with the community and people are engaging with it, has lots of different resources on it. Like a lot of churches, we very quickly got to grips with Zoom and we were able to keep our fellowship going that way and able to do some really beneficial things together as a church, such as the prayer course and God's Big Picture and some multi-voice services where everybody contributed something, whether it be a reflection or a song. We were even able to take our very popular summer beach mission online. We linked in with Scripture Union Scotland and the fantastic resources they produced uh, it was our usual week of fun and games and crafts and crazy outfits and looking at science and faith. But this year the unexpected bonus was that parents were more engaged with it because they had to be in the room and because a lot of the resources we were able to then share online. Some of the videos that we put on Facebook got a couple of thousand views so we're really praying into the seeds that were planted there and it's another example of God bringing something brilliant and unexpected out of a situation that seemed really difficult. And some people think that science has disproved that God exists. But I think that science has just proved more and more that the world is so terribly clever that God must exist. You see? Uh, we also had a youth alpha course. We'd always struggled to get the young people together with all their schoolwork, but with lockdown they were freed up in the evenings and we did it on Zoom. And by the end of the course, four of the five young people who did it had made a real commitment to Jesus, which is amazing. So we're very grateful for that. And we've also had the space to be able to do some pretty major building work on one of our buildings, uh, which is to enable us to do many different activities, use it much more flexible space so that we can engage with the community and uh, do different outreach events in the community so I feel that like God has been showing us a number of different things but probably paramount, most important and all the things he's shown us is that we need to be fully reliant upon him. Uh, we are conscious of our daily need uh, for God in every moment. There's been so many challenges and difficulties in the midst of a season 
and so God has really pushed us to a place where we're fully reliant upon him. Uh, secondly, I think uh, it's really highlighted the fact that we miss one another. Um, we have a small church building and for us it's very difficult to meet uh, face to face. We are looking for, forward to that opportunity to once again uh, meet uh, as a church family. But at the moment everything's online and so we're just so aware of the fact that, that we're not meeting and that face to face contact is so important for us uh, as a church. Uh, and finally just the importance of prayer. Um, we've become more and more aware and more and more conscious of the absolute necessity of prayer and it's the one thing that's really brought us together as a church family is to pray together, to pray for our church family and to pray for our church community, for our community as well. Denison Baptist Church was a replant five years ago. Uh, we started with seven members in 2015 and we've grown to around 50 uh, on a Sunday. We've been really encouraged and blessed in a number of different ways. Uh, we've seen salvations, we've seen baptisms, we've seen a return of prodigals. And in all these ways, there are clear evidences of, of God's grace uh, towards us. Um, as we've moved forward, we've carried this, this heart and this desire to fulfill both the Great Command and the Great Commission. Uh, we want to love God with all that we are. We want to love our neighbour as ourselves. And we also want to be disciples who go and make disciples. And with the pandemic and with lockdown, we've had to adapt a number of different things. So everything's been pushed online at the moment. We have, during the week, opportunities to connect over Zoom and WhatsApp. And we have our service online as well. Uh, and so with this, it's been a challenge, it's been difficult, but there's also been new opportunities to connect with folk who wouldn't normally attach themselves uh, to a church. So in that sense, there's been a real blessing uh, in the midst of uh, the difficulty and hardship. So we're really encouraged at what God is doing and it's made us more and more dependent upon him through all of us. Uh, Post-COVID, whenever that will be, uh, we have a, a bigger vision of being disciples who make disciples. And as we zoom out of that vision, we see ourselves as being a church that plants churches. Uh, at the moment, we're in the process of purchasing a building in Ridry, which is a five minute drive from here. And our hope is that we would be one church and two locations, two different locations in East End. We're so aware of the need that exists within the East End of Glasgow. And so we're so expectant and aware that God is going to equip us in the midst of this missionary process and this missionary journey. Um, as we move forward, we do carry an even greater vision for the East End of Glasgow and Glasgow and Scotland itself. Uh, and so we are just believing and obeying and trusting that God will lead us in the days and months that lie ahead. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never failed me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness. Oh my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing
sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after. running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me so my Of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God It's so good to sing of the goodness of God, his faithfulness mm -hmm. in what has been a really challenging six or seven months uh, for I'm sure for, for all of us we can say that and it's always encouraging, though, in the midst, just to hear God breathing new life in our churches across Scotland, even during COVID. We want to just take a moment now, and we're just going to play uh, some music gently in the background, to give you a time to pause and reflect on the stories that you've heard, and maybe the story you've experienced yourself over this time, that you may come to God and ask him where his goodness has been revealed to you, and the goodness of God has been seen over these past few months. Let's just take some time of stillness now before the Lord. Father, we long to see more new life. We long to see more of your fruitfulness in your kingdom. Thank you that you are good. We bless you. Father God, we celebrate what you've been doing in Isla and Deniston for the new life that has been happening in these communities. We ask, Lord, that you would multiply this out in our land, that hope and faith would rise that you are the God of the impossible, the God who brings new life to that which is dying and dead. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 We're going to take some time to listen to God through the Bible, and I'm delighted that Mark Morris of Deniston Baptist will share that with us just now. Well, it really is great to be able to join with you today. And for us to be able to spend time opening and unpacking God's Word. If you don't know me, my name's Mark. I'm the pastor at Denison Baptist Church in the East End of Glasgow. Uh, the question I'm going to be asking uh, today in the short time that we have is, is a pretty straightforward but also important question. 
Um, how can we as Baptist churches be more effective in mission? How can we as Baptist churches be more effective in mission? Now I'm conscious of a couple of things as I try and answer that question. Uh, first of all, I'm aware that many of us watching, uh, most of us, have at some point asked that question about our own lives and about our own situations and circumstances, even about our own churches. It's perhaps even been a prayer, God, how can I, God, how can we be more effective in your missionary call? And secondly, as I share all that I have to share, uh, I'm not here today to try and reinvent the wheel. And um, what I have to say will most likely be familiar to many of us. Um, but having said that, um, I do think that what I have to share may be something you've forgotten about and it may be something you've forgotten about for a long time or some time as we try and answer this question about being on mission. So my hope and prayer is that as we answer this question about mission, it will hopefully redirect our gaze towards God and his will and his way uh, for our churches and the craziness that is Scotland in 2020. And so for us to do that, there's only one place we can start, and that's the Word of God. So let me read Psalm 80, and then unpack something of what the psalmist is getting at here, as it relates to our own circumstances. So the psalmist says these words, Listen, shepherd of Israel, who leads Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine on Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh, rally your power and come to save us, restore us, God, make your face shine on us, so that we may be saved. Lord God of armies, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You fed them the bread of tears and gave them a full measure of tears to drink. You put us at odds with our neighbours, our enemies mock us. Restore us, God of armies, make your face shine on us so that we may be saved. You dug up a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared a place for it. It took root and filled the land. The mountains were covered by its shade, and the mighty cedars with its branches. It sent out sprouts toward the sea, and shoots toward the river. Why have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass by pick its fruit? Boars from the forest tear at it, and creatures of the field feed on it. Return, God of armies, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine, the root your right hand planted, the sun that you made strong for yourself. It was cut down and burned, they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Let your hand be with the man at your right hand, with the Son of Man you have made strong for yourself. Then we will not turn away from you. Revive us, and we will call on your name. Restore us, Lord God of armies. Make your face shine on us, so that we may be saved. Amen. And may God bless the reading of his word today. A couple of months ago, I was in Duke Street in Denison, and I was standing outside a chippy, waiting for my fish supper. Now, straight away, uh, with the start of a story, I'm aware of the fact that I'm maybe not helping you break stereotypes you have of Glasgow. Um, but I was standing outside this chippy, and there was a couple of us who had ordered and were waiting, and a few more were waiting in the queue, and most of us standing outside had face masks on. Uh, and this elderly lady, and when I say elderly, I mean that she was most likely in her 80s, was slowly walking down Duke Street. And with her little walker, she was veering towards the entrance of the chip shop. And I vividly remember she had two face masks on. She looked vulnerable, she was frail. It looked like she was getting what she had to get in Denison and then going back home as quickly as possible. And as she's walking towards the entrance, I suddenly hear this guy, much younger than her, who was in the queue, saying the harshest of tones, excuse me, there's a queue, excuse me, there's a queue. And honestly, it was less of what he said and more of how he said it, his tone, his demeanour, he stepped forward a bit just to show how serious he was about it. Everything about him was saying to this elderly lady, don't even try it, get to the back of the queue. And I so wish I stood up for this lady, but I didn't, and my cowardice, I kept quiet. But inside I was thinking, you know, man, where is the respect here? Where is that sense of honour that we should be showing our older folk? For all that they've went through in the past, and for all that they're going through right now, is this what it's come to? You know, telling our elderly folk to get to the back of the queue in a chip shop. You know, for me, this was a fresh reminder that this pandemic, this lockdown, with many notable exceptions, is bringing out the very worst in people. We can all probably straight away think of a number of different examples that highlight the worst of humanity as a result of what we've experienced through pandemic and lockdown. 
And maybe it's not bringing out the worst in people, maybe it's just unveiling what was already in people's hearts. The things that we so often use to hide who we really are have been stripped away and what's left is a stark reality of who we are in and of ourselves. And that's been characteristic of our society as a whole. Um, but what about our churches? And what about our own individual lives as we think about walking with Christ? Let's be honest today, many of us can feel the grind of lockdown. We're zoomed out or not. We're WhatsApped beyond comprehension. We're battle weary. We long for the day where we can all gather again face to face together as one church family. And we're all managing the difficult circumstances of our society whilst at the same time trying to, to live our lives and be church in the midst of all of this challenge. And it's in this context that I'm asking this question about mission. And so your response today might be one where you say, you know, there's so much craziness going on at the moment. There's so much I'm overwhelmed with. The last thing I'm thinking about is mission. And that would be a natural response to all that we're facing at the moment. But I just want to encourage us today. Our call to be on mission and our response to this call should not come from within ourselves. It should come from God as he is at work within us. And this is how the church, this is how God's people throughout history, throughout the centuries have lived. The difficult circumstances of people's lives led to a greater reliance and dependence in God. And this resulted in effective and fruitful mission, resulting in God's kingdom being advanced. This is characteristic of so many moments in human history. And this is what we see in scripture as well amongst the people of God. You know, some of the most trialing moments and circumstances for God's people in scripture have been the precise moments where people turn to God. He arrives in power, lives are transformed. So mission is most effective when times are difficult. This is what we see in history. This is what we see in scripture. When we feel overwhelmed because we have no one to turn to, then we can turn to God and he'll provide our every need. And this is what we see in Psalm 80 in our passage today. Uh, Psalm 80 is in many regards the story of a vine. And this is really cool because I was, I was digging into, deep into this psalm in preparation for this message today. And then I started to realise there's actually a connection here between this picture of a vine and this name and this theme of canopy which represents our gathering this year. And there are three parts to this story of the vine in Psalm 80. Each part highlights something of the relationship between God and his people. The first part we read in verses 8 to 9. The psalmist speaks of God's initiating work in planting this vine. God's initiating work in planting this vine. It's God who establishes the relationship. God's people can't take any credit for it. In verse 8 we read, You, speaking of God, dug up a vine from Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. And in verse 9, again, you cleared a place for it. It took root and filled the land. Now, notice the use of you to highlight what God has done for his people. To save, to lead and to bless them for his glory. And notice, this psalm is speaking of the story of God's people in the bigger storyline of the Old Testament. So there's blessing here from God to his people. But something changes. There's a shift in what the psalmist says. This beautiful vine was no longer the vine that it once was when it was planted. And in verses 12 to 13 we read, Why have you broken down its walls, so that all who pass by pick its fruit, boars from the forest tear at it, and creatures of the field feed on it? So what we learn from these words of the psalmist is that the vine has been weakened, misused, abused, and it seems to have been weakened by external sources. People who pass by, boars from the forest, creatures of the field. And if we know our Old Testament, we'll know that this is speaking of a corruption within God's people through idolatry. They turned away from the living God and focused on other things. In effect, they fulfilled the prayer of Jonah. In Jonah 2.8, the prophet recognises his prayer to God and his prayer to God that those who cherish worthless idols abandon their faithful love. Those who cherish worthless idols abandon their faithful love. And so the psalmist sees all of this. He's recognising that things are not as they ought to be. And so his response in verse 14 is one of turning to God. He says, return God of armies, look down from heaven and see, take care of his vine. So it's a, a cry to God that's saturated in repentance. He's so aware of his need for God. He's asking God for divine intervention. 
And the psalmist also says in three different occasions in a psalm in verse 3, 7 and 19, words to the effect of, Restore us, God, make your face shine on us so that we may be saved. And in verse 18, the psalmist recognises this current, present day reality that he's facing. And so he cries out, Revive us and we will call on your name. Revive us, God, so that we can more effectively and faithfully and fruitfully pray to you. So return, restore, and revive. This is a response of the psalmist. In light of the spiritual decay and turmoil he sees in his society and amongst God's people. And so I wonder if the psalmist's heart cry is also your heart cry. Are these the kind of prayers that we pray when we are alone with God? God, return. Look down from heaven and see. Please, God, take care of your church. And God, restore. Restore us. Make your face shine on us so that we may experience salvation and the fullness of salvation given to us. And God, revive us. Revive. Revive us so that we might call on your name. Is this characteristic of Baptist churches in Scotland? These kinds of prayers. And this has everything to do with our question about mission. Because we're only effective on mission to the extent to which we are in close communion with our risen Lord and Saviour, asking that he would step in and change our situations. We cry out, God, return, restore, revive us. And we continue that prayer and we say, so that we might be those who shine you to a lost people in place. This is exactly why Jesus says what he says in John 15, 5. Jesus says this, I am the, and there's that word again, the vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. What a challenge for us. If we want a tree to produce healthy fruit, we don't focus on the branches. We focus on what the branches are connected to. Is there a healthy vine? Is there a healthy trunk? Are there healthy roots flowing into the branches, producing the right kind of fruit? This applies directly to our own spiritual lives. Whatever sources we get resource from will determine our spiritual effectiveness according to his grace. The fruits of our lives are determined by the roots of our lives. So when it comes to mission, what sources are we relying on as Baptist churches? Is it technique? Is it technique? Do you think that if you say or do something in the right way towards an unbeliever, then this will result in effective mission? Is it knowledge? Do you think that as long as you have enough information and answers for people, then this is going to lead them to Christ? Is it relevance? Do you think that you being on the cutting edge of culture is what's going to win them for Jesus? Or is it choosing today and all your days to remain in Jesus, recognising that apart from him, you can do nothing, absolutely nothing. And the overflow of that life is one where mission, effective, fruitful mission, results and the glory of God results in God being made much of. So William Carey, a founder of the BMS, the Baptist Missionary Society, known as the father of modern missions, is famous for saying this, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. Expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. What a powerful quote that is, and such a helpful quote as we think about being on mission. And in light of what we spent time looking at today, I want to insert something before it, which is so vital to this journey that we go on called mission. And I want to insert, it's quite cheeky of me, but I want to do it, enjoy great times with God. Enjoy great times with God. The reality is, it's only when we are in the presence of God and we are, we're enjoying God, that we will expect great things from him. And we will then, as a result, attempt great things for him. So focus on mission by focusing on God and watch, watch how he works in and through you for his glory and for his mission as your time, attention and affections are centred in him. You know, I was reminded about this from an article uh, I read a few years ago. Um, I was at a family gathering and for some reason there was an old Scottish Baptist magazine lying on a table and I came, came across this article by one of our ministers, Willie Wright. Uh, now Willie I think is well known by many of us, I've never met Willie myself but I'm thankful that even today I'm being ministered to by something that he wrote 26 years ago, October 1994. Um, and the article is titled, 
um, spirit and word in one agreed. And I just want to share uh, something of what he writes. Um, so we read these words. I want to share a conviction that has been grown within my heart over the past few years and which has been underlined more and more in these days. It is this, that what we need to grasp is the close relationship there is between the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And he continues and he gives some examples of this relationship between the Spirit and the Word in First Peter and John 3 and Ezekiel 37 in the Valley of Dry Bones. And then he says, in recent years, there's been something of a divide in our country. It would almost appear as if some people said that it was a word we needed and others maintained that it was a spirit. However, if we truly listened to what God says to us by his spirit through his word, we would know that it was not a question of either or, but both and. It is the word and the spirit. They belong together. All of that is so helpful for us today. And Willie then goes on to quote a Graham Kendrick song and finishes with words that apply directly to what we're talking about today. He says this, May God help us in these days to be people who are filled with the word and filled with the spirit. And this is a key part for us today. That we might present Jesus Christ in the power and love of the spirit. So filled with the word, filled with the spirit, that we might present Jesus Christ and the power and love of the Spirit. Another way of saying that would be this, the one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit. This is what it means to be effective in mission. And so Lord, let this be true for our churches in this day. Um, what I want to do is just to, to say a prayer, and it's a prayer based on this Graham Kendrick song. It really highlights the necessity of God's word and God's Spirit as we engage in mission for his glory. So let's pray together. Jesus, restore to us again the gospel of your holy name that comes with power, not words alone, own signed and sealed from heaven's throne, spirit and word in one agreed, the promise to the power wed, the word is near here in our mouths and in our hearts the word of faith, proclaim it on the Spirit's breath, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. What a, a, a brilliant word. I love that from Mark there. Let's just take a moment uh, after that message to listen to God. What has he been saying to you through that message there? What is he to say to you about fruitfulness and mission? What is he saying about closeness? What is he saying about those R words? Return to God. Cry for his restoration. Look for his reviving influence in our life. And finally, to remain in him. Fruitfulness and mission comes firstly from closeness with God and abiding in him. We need the word of God and the spirit of God in unity that we may present Jesus to the world. Let's just take a moment. Sometimes you might find it helpful just to journal down on a bit of pen and paper, take a note on your phone. God has been speaking throughout this experience, but what is he saying to you this morning? Just before we move on, we're, let's just finish with this little, uh, Mark quoted this little line here from an old article. May God help us in these days to be people who are filled with the word and filled with the spirit that we might present Jesus Christ in the power and love of the spirit. Amen. Amen. It hasn't just been us in Scotland that have been affected by COVID. This has been a global pandemic and we're going to take some time to listen to how some of our friends connected with BMS from across the globe have been experiencing this the past few months. Hi Canopy, it's so great to have been invited to share with you a little bit about how Baptists in Scotland have been responding to the coronavirus pandemic across the globe. My name's Rachel Conway-Dole and I am the overseas team leader at BMS, which means I head up all the disaster relief and recovery work. As you can imagine, this year has been quite busy. 
but we're so grateful for your support as we've worked to respond to people's needs uh, as they faced the COVID pandemic in their countries. It's been a real privilege to work with partners as they've undertaken life-saving support for people over the last six months. It's life-saving support that really would not have been possible without the support of churches in Scotland, so thank you so much. I got some updates about all the work that you've made possible, but first of all, I'd like to show you a short video so that you can hear from some of the people that you've been supporting on the ground. The um, impact of the of the of the lockdown has been pretty pretty severe, particularly for uh, the economy. Uh, most people here live uh, hand to mouth, day by day. Um, the money that they earn from their business activities is what they spend on feeding their family. Um, so um, shutting down the economy basically overnight has um, put you know many people at risk of um, of hunger and starvation. If coronavirus spreads uh, further um, and yeah, uh, there are far more cases than there are, there are right now, that has got the potential to be absolutely catastrophic to this country. Um, I'm not sure if there are any ventilators in the country. If there are, there are very few. Um, and so the ability for the hospitals here to care for the sickest patients is going to be um, severely limited. Um, yeah, so that is, that is a concern as the numbers start slowly increasing. We are praying for a miracle of protection for this land and these beautiful people as the country is not in any way able to cope with a pandemic. If or when the virus takes hold here and spreads, the hospitals will be overrun and there are few facilities to isolate and support the chronically sick. A global pandemic requires a global response. You can make a difference. Please pray, please give, and please visit bmsworldmission.org slash coronavirus to help now. It's really hard to escape the reality that even within our own communities, the pandemic is far from over. And so with your support, BMS is committed to continuing to respond to the needs of our sisters and brothers around the world. And despite the pandemic continuing, your giving and prayers to BMS or Missions coronavirus response have made a huge difference already. And I'd like to share with you some highlights. So far, we've been able to make 28 relief grants with more in the pipeline across 17 countries, helping over 35,000 people around the world. And that is just incredible. I'm uh, really privileged in my job to be able to read uh, all the stories and uh, reports of work that's come in. And so thanks to you, we've been able to convert an abandoned police station in the very north of Chad to a COVID-19 screening and treatment centre. We've been able to deliver with your support and also the help of a local farmer's donkey, some food parcels to people living in remote mountainous regions of Tunisia. We were also able to give some small cash transfers to households in Bangladesh that were facing uh, income and livelihoods issues. And uh, Barnabas and Pratrash delivered these and said that the households were going to be buying kind of salt, oil, vegetables, dal, rice and other necessities. And they said that so many of those households were giving Thanksgiving and wanted to send back their thanks uh, to the UK for sending their help and for praying for them. UK Christians have so far donated over £290,000 to the BMS Coronavirus Appeal. It's our most complex and wide-reaching relief effort ever and we'd be so, con so grateful for your continued support and prayers. We'd be most grateful for your prayers in particular for those on the ground who you're enabling to serve the people around them and serve them safely. Thank you for those prayers because together you're all bringing hope, help and the love of Jesus. So thank you so much for all of us at BMS. We are truly grateful for your support and we hope you have a really blessed time together at Canopy. Thank you.
Thank you to BMS for that update. Um, Martin caught up with the General Director of BMS World Mission, Kang Santan, and interviewed him about what they've been learning from God at this time. Kang San, great to see you. How are you doing today? I'm pretty good, Martin. Thank you. Good. Well, I wondered if you could just tell us something about what, what is the big focus of BMS just now? Thank you for just a close partnership between Baptist Union of Scotland with BMS. We are increasingly uh, reaffirm, reaffirming our commitment to the least evangelized region. So particularly working through the Asia Pacific Baptist Federation and networks to facilitate evangelism in Asia. And secondly, uh, we, BMS is going to launch a new area of ministry, what we call the people on the move. And particularly, we are looking at the challenges of engaging with refugees from North Africa into Europe, and we will participate with European Baptist uh, Federation in their refugee networks. Most of all we do in sending workers working among least evangelized and most marginalized uh, mission will continue, but we will launch this new area of mission among people on the move. Hey, that sounds exciting. Um, so amongst the least evangelized people, working particularly among, amongst refugees, people on the move. And, and what is it that just fires you up? about being a, a Christian mission agency at this time? Coronavirus have really opened up new opportunities for Christians in Scotland to see that integrity of mission is not just overseas, but also locally. But then at the same time, we are mindful for BMS that God is doing a new thing uh, around the world in terms of the opportunities for continued mission uh, in the areas of marginalization among poverty. For example, just very quickly in the last few months, we raised over 250,000 pounds and many through generous support of Christians in Scotland. So I think God is opening up new opportunities for the church to be missional, both locally as well as around the world. And BMS is just privileged to partner with Christians in Scotland to, to do that. Kang San, we are really glad to be friends with BMS, to be co-workers for Jesus. And I think we feel the same passion that God is doing something new here through and out of these coronavirus times and in the whole of his world too. Thanks very much for popping in to join us today. Really good to see you. Thank you. Have a good conference, Martin. God bless. It's just been really great to hear stories of what God has been doing both here and a further afield overseas. And we'd love to also hear your stories. So please, if you do, please do share some on the live feed Thanks, or you can text us. Uh, the numbers are in there on the screen below. Uh, I, saw, I saw Hannah last night so excited to be able to do that. <laughs> Almost as excited as me. We'd love to hear a testimony of what God's been doing in and through your life, through the church that you're about, through your community. So do get in contact with us. You can message us on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, or if technology is not your thing, really, uh, and you're of a more mature generation, you, letters are still absolutely an option. Just send them to Spears Wharf. And uh, speaking of a more mature generation... <laughs> That's such a terrible link, Ali. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, we're now going to hear of an interview from a couple of our recently retired ministers. Amy Aitken, one of our recently accredited ministers, caught up with David Wilson and Derek Conabeer. Thank you both very much for joining us. It's a delight to be here with Derek and with David, two of our ministers who are moving on from full-time ministry. Guys, great to have you here with us at Canopy today. Uh, tell us where you're joining us from, Derek. Where are you today? Well, I'm I'm in Shetland. Even though I'm an Englishman, I've gone all the way up to up to Shetland. Uh, that's been my last uh, pastoral 
uh, post, as it were. And David, where are you joining us from today? I'm staying with some friends in Hamilton, Amy. We've just sold our house and we're waiting to move into a new house, so we're with friends in Hamilton. So as a newly accredited minister, I thought it'd be good for us to have a bit of a chat as someone who's kind of in the beginning of the journey um, to chat to someone who has now years of wisdom and experience behind you. Um, so I wanted to ask just a couple of questions. And the first one is thinking of, so I, well, a lady should never give away her age, but I'm about to be 33. Going back to where you were at 33, um, when you were kind of starting out in full-time ministry, is there anything that you really held on to that you thought was a really important uh, practice or principle for full-time ministry that actually over the years you have maybe loosened your grip on or let go or changed your understanding of uh, as being key? Is there anything that you've kind of let go uh, and become more flexible about over the years? Um, Derek, I'll ask you. I'll ask you that one. Yeah, that, that's, that's a question to, to really ponder, Amy. And, and, and I thought, first of all, my answer would be, be no to that, that sort of question. Um, but I, I, think, I think maybe it's not so much a principle, but I think the, uh, the visiting aspect. I mean, when I was at college, we were taught very clearly the importance of pastoral visiting. And uh, that's something that I did uh, in, a, in a kind of blanket way when I began my ministry. But I, I, I think as the years have gone on, especially with, the, with modern technology as it's come in, I can see that there are other ways uh, that, I, that I can contact people, easier ways sometimes that I can contact people. So I haven't let go of the principle of, of uh, pastoral visiting, um, but but I've adapted it. And David, if I could ask you kind of the same question, but in reverse, is there anything now that you have found to be really important for you as a pastor in your practice and in your principles? Is there anything really important to you now that you wouldn't have thought was important when you first started out? Yeah, well, I suppose for me, um, the main thing, I don't think there's things that, that weren't important. I think there are some things that have become more important to me over the years. Um, I think that, again, Bible preaching that, that's relevant, that's rooted in by the Bible, and that is applied to people's life is something that I, I see as of great importance in the days that we live in, where there's a kind of loosening in many, in many ways from traditional kind of life. And also, um, early in my ministry, I preached a, a series on Moses, and in that series, what, what came through with great force was the just the lordship of God, and I found that really helpful, and it's continued to be helpful. Sometimes in ministry, you can sort of figure out, oh, can I please this group or this person or that, and then I suddenly got to the point where I thought, well, I'm going to seek God, try to discern his will, and I, I'm going to follow that that through to the best of my ability trying to be as understanding to people as I can, but, you know, it's God's way that, that's more important, and I've, I've sought to hold to that over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you both for that, and may I just thank you and bless you for all that you have done in your full-time ministry, and I know that you'll be blessed and honoured by the Lord for all the time and, and the way that you've given your lives to serving others in his church. I'm going to hand over now to Anne, who's going to pray for you and pray for the retired ministers. Um, and I wish you both all the best. Thank you. So let's give thanks for those who are retiring from ministry this year and also ask God's blessing on them as they move on into this new phase of life and service. Let's pray. God of love, we come to you in gratitude for the ministry of Carol, Derek, Leslie, Jim, and David. We thank you that they answered your call to ministry and we thank you that they stayed faithful to that call through all the demands and challenges of ministry. We thank you too for all the tiny daily human interactions that are ministry. For every word of comfort or challenge spoken, for every meal shared, for every grief consoled, for every human situation transformed by the sharing of your redeeming love. As they look back, 
May they see and understand the difference that their ministry has made to the lives of countless people, some known and some unknown. And as they look forward, may they hear your invitation to new adventures of faith, just as clearly as they did when they first responded to your call. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much, Anne. Anne Muir there, who was praying, is the chair of our Board of <laughs> Ministry, and we're so appreciative to her and the work that she does in the Board of Ministry. And we're so appreciative also for the ministries of David Wilson, Derek Connabier, Carol Campbell, Leslie Edge, and Jim Simpson, who Anne prayed for there. And I wonder, just in the spirit of how we have been this weekend, if you know them, maybe you should drop them an encouragement email or text and just give them thanks for their service over many, many years. We really value those that are set aside within our family of churches to serve the Lord with all they have. So why not bless them just now, take a moment, send a text, send an email. Tremendous. Well, we're reaching the end of our uh, time together, and I wonder, uh, do we have any feedback from YouTube or uh, live stream this morning, we Ailey? We do, we do. We've had someone that have said um, during the prayer relay last night that they were reflecting on the passage from Romans 11, and it reminded them of what a privilege it was to have been grafted into the faith. If the root is holy and, the branch, and so are the branches, let's keep our roots in the right things so that our branches so our branches and fruit are honouring and pleasing to the Lord in every way. So that was really encouraging. Fantastic. We've had lots coming in as well. What the people just, uh, Adam uh, Olliman, so she's remind, reminding us that prayer is so vital at this mm. time. I'm sure that's come across really strongly uh, throughout this. So uh, what's been your favourite thing? What's been your highlight, Ailey, from this morning? Do you know, I thought it was really refreshing um, seeing Mark Morris chatting about the fruit, that if we um, focus on the roots, then our, we'll be more fruitful. I love that, hearing him saying all that. It was great. <laughs> Fantastic. I love the worship as well. Oh, it was great. love it's the worship. It's amazing. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's us for our first session this morning. And uh, we've really appreciated you guys joining in. And... Um, we would just love to invite you back later on this afternoon. Uh, we've got a session starting at half past 11 uh, where Martin and Pat will be leading us through and uh, we'll be looking forward to that. And there's a whole bunch of other things happening. And where would you find out information about what's happening at other so points? So if you head to the Baptist Union of Scotland website, all the links and everything will be there and um, on the website and you just click on the links. Fantastic. Bye now. See you later. <laughs>